Right, great, Charles, on to topic three. So, so far on differentiation, we've had two topics. Number one was dif differentiation from first principles, which we were quite used to. Then topic two was the product chain and quotient rule, which are new. Now, topic three, this is new to the curriculum. So, last year was the first year where the grade 12s covered this. So, if you look at past papers from the beginning of AP Maths until 2018, you won't see derivatives of exponentials and log functions, because that was new as of 2019 but it's quite fun and um, it was in last year's paper and it'll definitely be in your paper so we're going to do 3.1 and 3.2 this video is on 3.1 which is focusing on exponential functions so for an exponential function now what's pretty cool is I'm busy making this video in the middle of the coronavirus and if you're differentiating an exponential function you're finding at the rate of change of the exponential function as in the gradient which is exactly what we're interested in at the moment. How, what is the rate of change of our infection? Um, which is pretty cool. So if we have a look at this, it says for an exponential function, the derivative of any base to the power of x is equal to lin b, remember b, lin b would just be a constant, times b to the power of x. Now the proof of this particular um, derivative is well beyond, beyond what we learn, you'll do it in varsity, and therefore we're not going to focus on all exponentials, we're going to focus on an exponential where the base is e. So this rule here you don't actually have to know because we can't prove it at this level of maths and so we're only going to use it at varsity, but technically that's the derivative for any log function. So if we focus on everything with the base of e, if we use this rule, the derivative of e to the x would be lin e, because remember b is your base, which I've now made e, so it's lin e times e to the x. Now fortunately we should know that lin e is 1, because e to the power of what will give me e a 1. So actually the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Now that's exactly what made E, well, one of the millions of reasons why E is so special. So therefore if, and you can see I've made a typo here, so let's put an F in there. So if F of X equals E to the X, then the derivative is equal to E to the X, which is pretty cool. And then it says, and if F of X is equal to K, which is just a constant times E to the X, then the derivative is just K E to the X. So you don't have to think of it as a product rule, because if k is a constant, it's not a function of x, it's just a coefficient. So it's almost like me saying to you, if you have x squared, the derivative of x squared is 2x, or so I shouldn't say equal to, because that's not equal to. So it's exactly the same idea as if I say 3x squared, then the derivative would be 3 times 2 to the x. So it works exactly the same way with e to the x. The k is just the coefficient, and we keep it. So we're going to do a whole bunch of examples. So example number one says, determine f dash x if f of x equals 2e to the x. Now this is really cool because remember the coefficient just comes along for the ride, so it's 2, and the derivative of e to the x is uh, e to the x. So that's really easy. So any function with e to the x is actually really boring to differentiate unless we start making things a little bit more interesting. So let's look at e to the power of 3x squared minus 2x. Now this is viewed as a chain rule. And it's viewed as a chain rule because your outside function is the fact that you've got e to the power of something. The outside function is you've got e to the power of something. And the derivative of e to the power of something is e to the power of something, so that's going to be quite easy. But my inside function here is what's inside that e. It's this something. So whatever's inside that exponent is called your inside function. So it actually isn't as complicated as the chain rule can be because the outside function is e to the power of 3x squared minus 2x, so it remains e to the power of 3x squared. Remember, you leave the inside function alone, so that's a squared multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Now your inside function is just 3x squared minus 2x and that will be 6x minus 2. So it's pretty pretty easy with exponentials. So notice I've, I've written this as a kind of rule at the bottom here that says if your function is f of x e to the power of not just x but some function then the derivative is e to the power of g of x and then multiply by the derivative. So that literally is just the chain rule. 
the derivative of the outside function is just the same thing multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. So these aren't actually very complicated. So let's look at example two, which kind of plays on this idea. So if you have a look here, this isn't the product rule because this is a constant. However, this is the chain rule because negative x is an inside function. So if I try and do this, my dy dx, just to practice my notation, is now don't forget you leave the constant it's got nothing to do with this so this is negative 3 and now I'm differentiating e to the negative x which the outside function is e to the negative x multiplied by the derivative of the inside function which is your negative x which differentiates to negative 1 so if I neaten that up a bit that's actually 3 e to the negative x right let's try another one f of x is equal to e to the power of 4x so f dash x is the outside function is e to the whatever so it's just e to the 4x multiplied by the derivative of the inside function which is 4x which differentiates to 4 so it's 4 e to the 4x is my derivative right moving on question c question c dy dx notice the 3 is just a coefficient it's not a function of x so I'm going to leave the 3 differentiate e to the power of 3x minus 2, so it's e to the power of 3x minus 2, except I must multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is this 3x minus 2, so that's differentiates to 3. So this is actually 9 e to the 3x minus 2. Right, so if we move on to d, um, d is an interesting question because it looks like a product. Now, don't forget, we only like to use the product rule when we kind of can't do anything else and I think you could absolutely use the product rule, and product rule here and it will work and I'm actually going to do both just for fun so if I use the product rule because I wasn't thinking the product rule says you have the first function which is here and I must differentiate the first function and the derivative of e to the power of x plus 4 is just e to the power of x then I leave my second function alone so that's e to the power of x minus 5 and then plus leave my first function alone multiply by the derivative of the second function which is also just e to the x because the 5 differentiates to nothing and so if I simplify this a little bit I could multiply those together when you multiply by the same base you add exponents so this is minus 5 e to the x and this is plus e to the 2x plus 4 e to the x which basically simplifies to 2 e to the 2x minus e to the x which is not a bad way to do it at all is there a different way well if you can multiply out a product fairly easily then why not so if I multiply this out to begin with this is e to the power of x plus x is 2x minus 5 e to the x plus 4 e to the x minus 20 which is e to the power of 2x minus e x minus 20 and you notice it's really similar to what the derivative is now the reason why it's really similar is the fact that when you differentiate e to the x it remains the same now this is a chain rule because it's e to the power of 2x but the inside function is 2x and that differentiates to 2 so that's why I get the same first term so just to say that again e to the power of 2x is a chain rule and your 2x is your inside function so it's differentiate the outside function multiply by the derivative of the inside function and e to the power of x differentiates to e to the power of x and so I get the same answer and they were probably both the same amount of effort right now if I look at e however I really don't feel like cubing a bracket because then I, I mean I could but if I'm being lazy what I would use now is I would use the chain rule because the chain rule would see the outside function as something cubed and the inside function as negative e to the x plus 1 so the outside function would differentiate to bring down the 3 so minus e to the x plus 1 take away 2 so remember leave the inside function alone differentiate the outside function and now I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the inside function which is that the one differentiates to nothing and this is minus e to the x because 
the minus is just a coefficient of minus 1, and it's e to the x. Now I could, I could multiply that out, I suppose. I probably wouldn't. So I get negative 3 e to the x, negative e to the x plus 1 squared. Great. On to question f. Would I see this as a quotient rule? Now, personally, I wouldn't see this as a quotient rule because this 1 is not a function of x. So I would prefer to bring the 2 minus e to the x to the top and make this actually into a chain rule. So I bring it to the top, and now I can do the chain rule. My outside function is the fact that you have something to the power of negative 1, and my inside function is the fact that you have 2 minus e to the x. So the chain rule says that the derivative would be equal to differentiate the outside function, so minus 1, leave the inside function alone, minus 1, multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is just minus e to the x, simply because the 1 disappears and minus 1 e to the x is minus 1 e to the x. So if I want to, I could actually take this to the bottom again. Again, if you want to, we're not fussed by negative exponents in AP maths, but I multiplied those two together to get a positive e to the x, and then just because I could, I took the um, bracket to the bottom. Right, let's look at g. g looks interesting because g definitely looks like a quotient. So do I want to do a quotient? Well, are there other options? Remember, a quotient is a little bit messy. It's not a problem. Um, but I'm also seeing that I have a lot of e's. And so possibly I could simplify this maybe. So I could say that this is e to the power of 3x over 2e to the x plus e to the power of x over. So I could split it like we used to do in grade 8. I could also do this. I could say um, y equals, and I could say e to the power of 3x plus e to the x. And then I could bring this to the top and say it's e to the minus x and still keep this over 2. Now that starts to get a bit messy because if I bring the 2 to the top, then the 2 also has a negative exponent and that's a bit annoying. So personally, I wouldn't have done the yellow. I would do the green because it allows me to simplify because when I divide powers at the same base, I subtract exponents. So e to the power of 3x divided by e to the power of x would be e to the power of 2x. Um, and this is still over 2. And here my e to the power of x would cancel, so it's plus a half. Now that's a much easier thing to differentiate rather than thinking of the quotient rule. Now the quotient rule would have gotten you the same answer. It probably wouldn't have looked the same in the beginning, and you'd have to probably do a quite a bit of manipulation to make it look the same. But now I can differentiate. Now don't forget that this is like having a half as a coefficient. So that just stays. So this is a half. Now e to the power of 2x will differentiate to e to the power of 2x, but multiplied by 2, because my inside function is 2x. And a half differentiates to nothing. So actually, this just differentiates to e to the power of 2x. So if I'd done the quotient rule, I guess there probably would have been a fair amount of manipulation in order to make this look um, a little bit a little bit more like as simple as e to the power of 2x. Right, so we've done some good practice on, on some e's and inside and outside functions. So last one for, for this, this 3.1 topic. It says, given g of x equals 2 e to the power of x minus 3 plus 4, can you determine the equation of the tangent? Now this is not something we've done since maths days. Now what's the most important thing about a tangent is a tangent has the same gradient as the function at the point of tangency. And at this point of tangency is a 3. So I'm going to say at x is equal to 3. So this does come up in AP Maths quite a lot, this idea of equations of tangents. And we're going to do it when we do our next one, 3.2, when derivative of log functions, we're going to do it as well. Don't forget that a tangent, the connection between a tangent and a graph, is that the gradient of the tangent is the same as the gradient of the function at that point. So basically, I need to know what g dashed of 3 is. Because if I can find g dashed of 3, that will equal my gradient of my tangent. Which means I first need g dashed. So let me just write this down. If g of x is 2e to the power of x minus 3 
plus 4. What is g dashed? So don't forget the 2 is just a coefficient. So it's 2 e to the power of x minus 3 will differentiate to itself. Now there's an inside function here. This is the inside function x minus 3. And what does x minus 3 differentiate to? It differentiates to 1. So it actually doesn't play a role here. And then the 4 differentiates to nothing. So actually it's 2 e to the power of x minus 3. So what is g dashed of 3? g dashed of 3 is e to the power of 3 minus 3, which is 2 times e to the 0, and anything to the power of 0 is 1. So actually my gradient at 3 is exactly 2 on this exponential function, which means my tangent is y is equal to 2x plus c. Now, mm, how do I find c? I need to know a point on my tangent. So my next important thing to remember from when we did this in maths, the function and the tangent share the same one point. So they share the point of tangency. As in, the point where they touch is on both of these curves. So I need to know where do they touch. So that's what I want to know. Where do they touch? Now they touch at x is equal to 3. So I need to know what is y. Now fortunately I have an equation that will give me y. So I need to say, well this is wonderful. I need to say and g of 3, the function value at 3, is 2 and what do you know it's 3 minus 3 again which is 2 times e to the power of 0 which is 2 times 1 which is 2 plus 4 is 6 so therefore my point of tangency is the point 3 6 so 3 6 is on both the tangent and the graph so those are the important things to remember from from normal maths. They share the same gradient at this point and they share the point. And so I'm going to go sub in this point into my tangent equation. So 6 equals 2 times 3 plus c and what do you know just per chance c is 0. So my tangent is y is equal to 2x. Great, so that's the end of 3.1. So our next lesson will be on derivatives of lin uh, which is equally as exciting. Well done.